Welcome to Beyond the Coverage. I'm Chris Horner. Today's episode brought to you by the Horner Cycling Foundation. August 10th is the day you want to save if you're a bike racer. Cascade Cycling Classic Bend Downtown Criteria will be August 10th. And if you want to view the race, save the date too. If you want to help out or if you want to be a spectator, save the date. It's an important date if you're in the bike racing. Certainly if you're here in Oregon, it's going to be a fantastic race day. We got the whole downtown closed off from noon till late in the night. We'll host the Oregon State Criterium Championships for the Masters and the Junior Racers too. Now let's get into today's stage. What do I want to talk about? Well, yesterday we talked about, of course, Tadej Pogacar. Second at the general classification in the Tour de France this year was Jonas Vinigo. So he's next up in line. How did Jonas Vinigo race the 24 Tour de France? Was his tactics spectacular? Tadej Pogacar thought his tactics were, but I broke it down to give you a different story on yesterday's video. Now Jonas Vinigo is the rider that I said tactically amongst the four favorites, I thought he was the best. I've had all kinds of problems, of course, with Jumbo Visma and Visma Lisa Bike now in 2024, what they're called. I've had problems with their team tactics many times. Many times I've liked them. But Jonas Finigo, as a whole, most of the time, I thought his tactics have been pretty solid. And I've said out of the four biggest best racers here at the Tour de France in 2024, Jonas Finigo, before the Tour de France started, I said his tactics are sound. Now, were they really sound coming into the 24 Tour de France? Well, of course, we had the crash at the Basque Country, stage four, way back there in April. Jonas Vinigo took the biggest brunt of the hit out of the three big time favorites with Primoz Rogac, Jonas Vinigo, and Rem Krevnipol, all three riders going down on that same stage. Jonas spent 12 days in the hospital. So it was a big time question mark whether or not if the rider from Denmark could come into the Tour de France and defend his two past Tour de France championships. So with that in mind, keep, keep that in mind that he can't predict what kind of form he can come into. He can just get it as good as he possibly can and hope that he can heal up 100%. No one knew exactly what to expect. Most of the commentators out there told you that they didn't believe that Jonas Finigo can make the Tour de France. I told you he can make the Tour de France, and I told you as soon as he got out of the hospital with 74 days left that I believed Jonas Finigo can make the Tour de France because he is incredibly professional when it comes to his trade, and he does the 100% that he possibly can to come into the Tour de France. So we go into stage one. We look at Visma Lisa bike. They're riding a bit too much on the front. This tactically as a team, I didn't like. I said it live when I was doing it on the butterfly effect. I didn't like using Wilco Kelderman and Jorgensen, Matteo Jorgensen, the American rider. I didn't like putting those two riders on on stage one, riding for Wout Van Aert. When you get to the top of the climbs and you start chasing the riders out front, well, it's a tall order right there. If you don't, if you don't have enough teammates to bring back the riders in front, and Bardet was flying. Along with Bardet flying, well, his teammate Frank Vandenbroek was flying too. They held off the group, and they ended up winning the stage and putting the race leader's yellow jersey on the DSM rider, Roman Bardet. Fantastic job. But I didn't like the team job from Visma Lisa Bike because, as I always say, if you can't rely on your whole team bringing something back or at least a little bit where you just need a tiny bit of help from outside teams, that's stage one. They needed a lot of help from outside teams. And while Van Aert, well... He did do a good showing at the end with the field sprint, but first and second row was already up, up the road. So I didn't like Visma Lisa Bikes tactic on stage one. Stage two comes. Remember stage two? Well, we got a breakaway up the road. Tade Pogacar's lighting everyone up on San Luca climb, the Giro Emilia course. As Tade Pogacar's lighting it up, we're all getting excited on the Chesterfield because Jonas Finico has some form. He's able to follow the Slovenian Tade Pogacar. Now, wisely... Jonas Vinigo works with Tadej Pogacar a little bit, but doesn't overwork too much at the top of the Col de San Luca there because it's a bit lumpy and bumpy up there. So he doesn't want to get attacked by Tadej Pogacar, the number one ranked rider in the world. He wisely does just enough to keep Tadej happy, works a little bit down the descent, and then sits on Tadej Pogacar, and the Slovenian has to pull into the finish. Remco Evnipol is able to come back because of the tactics being up front, and that allowed the Belgium rider to basically finish on same time up front with those two favorites. Now, Primoz Roglic lost some time there, the other Slovenian for Red Bull Bora Hansgrohe. So we knew after stage two that Jonas Vinigo was on some good form. Was it as good as Tadej Pogacar? Well, that's a different question, but tactically, he was money. Jonas Vinigo was money on stage two tactically. There's no doubt about it. We go into stage four. It's the first mountain stage of the Tour de France. Col de Galibier. Tade Pogacar waits until 800 meters to attack at the top of the Col de Galibier. Jonas Vinigo is the only rider capable of staying on his wheel for about 100, 200 meters there. Then the Slovenian drops 
Jonas Vinigo and Jonas Vinigo summits the top of the Col de Glibier. We'll call it eight, 10 seconds behind Tadej Pogacar up front. Now this moment, this is a difficult tactic right here for Jonas Vinigo. Does he sit up and wait for Remco Evnepoel coming and some other GC help back there? Or does he chase Tadej Pogacar? I am okay. He could take either choice here of going solo, trying to chase Tadej Pogacar up front or waiting for the group from behind. I had one of my home skills text me the night before that stage and he said, is Tadej Pogacar a better descender than Jonas Vinigo? I said, yes, he is a better descender, Tadej Pogacar, than Jonas Vinigo, but Tadej Pogacar is not so good that he can drop Jonas Vinigo unless he has a gap. So in my mind, when they go over the top, I'm happy with Jonas Vinigo choosing to either chase or sitting up and wait to go to the back. But if it was me and I could feel my legs and know that Tadej Pogacar descends maybe just a hair percentage faster, I possibly would have chose the pick of waiting for the group behind. Instead, Jonas Vinigo chases all the way down. He gets caught near the bottom with about five kilometers to go as Primoz Roglic is there, Remco Evnopoul there, Carlos Rodriguez from Ineos bombed the descent and just made up time all over the place. Then Jonas Vinigo had to suffer coming down that descent and of course tactically lost a little bit of time at the finish there while they were sprinting for second place because Tadej Pogacar won stage four. So stage four, tactically, like I said, I'm happy with how it played out. I'm not going to disc in any way whatsoever Jonas Vinigo, but I believe under that circumstances, I would have waited back there for Primoz Roglic, Rimko Evnopoul, and Carlos Rodriguez, who we all know can descend because we saw it at last year's stage of the Tour de France that he won. So we start going from stage four. We know Jonas Vinigo's on pretty good form. Again, with the highlights of stage two, the stage four, now we're gonna come up into the individual time trial. Jonas Vinigo, there's no tactics involved here other than not blowing yourself up until you cross the, the individual time trial. So he did a solid job. He finished fourth on the stage, finished behind Rim Crab and the Pool winning the stage, Tadej Pogacar second, Primoz Roglic third, and Primoz Roglic gained a little bit of time on Jonas in the later half of that stage, so maybe Jonas paced it just a hair wrong, but you can't really tactically call something that off. So I love the individual time trial from Jonas Vinigo because he only lost about 37 seconds. Now we go into stage nine, the gravel stage of the Tour de France. This stage is where Jonas Vinigo made everything tactically look beautiful. His Visma Lisa bike team were riding on the front, keeping him out of trouble all the time. Tadej Pogacar attacked, as I told you in yesterday's video, with about just under 90 kilometers to go. Remco Abnapul mistakenly, the knucklehead kid at this moment, he's a knucklehead, I know he's a brilliant, he's going to be a legend, but it's still a knucklehead move to close the gap up to Tadej Pogacar, and I explained that in yesterday's video. He closed it. Later, we see Remco Abnapul attacking. Then it was Tadej Pogacar's time to be a knucklehead because he closed it, and each time Jonas Vinigo was at the front capable of following the move from Tadej Pogacar and Remco Evnopoul directly, but instead, the rider from Bisma Lisa bike, he let those individual riders go up the road until a second one was attacking, then he would follow the move. So when Tadej Pogacar attacked, he followed Remco Evnopoul. When Remco Evnopoul attacked, he followed Tadej Pogacar. He was brilliant. Late in the stage, when Tadej Pogacar was capable of dropping Jonas Vinigo, Jonas Vinigo had his teammates around Visma Lisa bike. As a team, race stage nine, they were money on stage nine. It was a beauty to watch from the Chesterfield. And if you believe, like Remco Evnopoul said, that Jonas Vinigo didn't have big balls, you're 100% wrong. And so is Remco Evnopoul. He's a knucklehead for the tactics he played on stage nine and a knucklehead for bringing up big balls after stage nine because Jonas Vinigo was money tactically spot on. Now we start going into some real fun stages at stage 11 where Tade Pogacar bonked a little bit. Jonas Vinigo caught him on the penultimate climb and of course beat him in the sprint to win stage 11. Now things started getting super exciting because stage four, you thought Tade Pogacar was head and shoulders above everyone. Stage nine, Tade Pogacar looked physically head and shoulders above everyone and possibly even tactically to some commentators. I'm sure out there, look tactically head and shoulders above Visma Lisa bike. But then once we get into stage 11, now we know there's a battle between Tadej Pogacar and Jonas Vinigo. The next stage to look forward to going from stage 11 will advance up to stage 15. This was the big mountain stage, over 200 kilometers long, five mountain passes. This was the stage that six months ago, one year ago, whenever it was announced that the ASO had had this course added into the 24 Tour de France, Visma Lisa bike had circled stage 15. Jonas Vinigo had to be 100% recovered and be going solid on stage 15 because 
they believe the more clients that are in one stage, the more it benefits Jonas Finigo. I agree. Jonas Finigo being a lighter rider than Tadej Pogacar, if you're going to beat Tadej Pogacar anywhere, anywhere in a Tour de France stage, it has to be in the bigger mountains because Jonas Vingo's level will at least start to rise a little bit closer to the level of Tadej Pogacar. I did not say he get, becomes better than Tadej Pogacar, but I did say he can gain some more on Tadej Pogacar on a stage such as stage 15 of the Tour de France with five climbs and a summit finish. Now, this was one stage where, if I'm being picky about Jonas Vingo, after his team rode throughout all the early stages, full gas, all the time, trying to put pressure on Tadej Pogacar and UAE team members, it was Jorgensen that took the reins at the front of the peloton, going up the last climb, Plateau de Bay, and when Jorgensen rode the front, I was sitting on the Chesterfield and off from the speed and the power of the American Matteo Jorgensen as he was blowing up the group behind. He blew it up devastatingly for about four or five kilometers on the front for the American rider. Then we see Jonas Vingo hop on the front. The problem is, at this moment, when we go back in time for Visma Lisa bike and then Jumbo Visma in years past, well, they had Sepp Kuss, they had Steven Kreiswick, they had Wout Van Aert that was on flying form and capable of hurting most of the climbers in the Tour de France. This year, they don't have that. So although I'm incredibly impressed with the speed and the effort and that Matteo Jorgensen had put on on this final climb, it's not deep enough into the climb yet for Jonas Vinigo to be attacking Tadej Pogacar unless you can get rid of the Slo Slovenian directly. So we go into about 10.5 kilometers. Jorgensen's still on the front. Jorgensen's efforts have finally started to diminish. He's starting to blow. He does one hard acceleration. After that, he pulls off. Jonas Finigo attacks. This is exactly how they played it. This is how I saw it while I was sitting on the Chesterfield. But at this moment, Jonas Finigo and Vesma Lisebike's tactics changed from what I thought Jonas should have done. I believe he attacks at that moment because only only thing he can do, Jorgensen's done, he has to attack and he has to get the gap on Tadej Pogacar immediately on this stage 15, Plateau de Bay. Otherwise, the longer he stays in the front, the more the draft that Tadej Pogacar is getting and at the speeds, and we know the speeds were high on Plateau de Bay because they took three minutes plus off of Marco Pantani's time. So when you're thinking there's no draft, when you're hearing a commentator say there's no draft and everything's man against man on the climbers, do not ever listen to that commentator again and click him off because he doesn't know what he's talking about. At the speeds that the professional peloton is going up Plateau de Bay, especially with Jonas Fini going on the front, for sure there's a draft for the Slovenian Tade Pogacar. Now, once you get about a kilometer, a kilometer and a half away from the tack of Matteo Jorgensen riding on the front with Jonas Vingo still pulling, if you can't drop the Slovenian Tade Pogacar, in fact, if you can't drop him and you see him go over to the feeder and grab a bottle, sit up, take his hands off the bar, start cooling himself off, then put his hands back on the bar. If you can't drop him after those signs, it's time for Jonas Vinigo of Visma Lisa Bike to shut the gas down and start going into defense mode. Otherwise, he can lose a lot of time. At that moment, he was about two minutes plus down on Tadej Pogacar. So there's still other stages left at the Tour de France. But instead, Jonas Vinigo kept going full gas. He drove all the way in for about five kilometers. And then Tadej Pogacar made Jonas Vinigo pay for that mistake tactically as he lit him up and rode the last five kilometers and decimated Marco Pantani's time up there on Plateau de Bay. Now, Jonas Vinigo beat Marco Pantani's time too, and so did Remco Evnepoel. But it was a tactical mistake for Jonas Vinigo to sell out all the way. I know the plan. Six months ago, when the race organizers from ASO announced this stage that they were going to go 100% all in, their director, Sportif, that's driving the car, when he saw the same pictures on TV that I'm watching from the Chesterfield with Tadej Pogacar sitting up, at that moment, they have to abort the plan. Doesn't matter if you made the plan six months ago in December, October, or whatever the date was. That plan needed to be aborted at that moment, and Jonas Finigo did not. Now, after stage 15, we know that Tadej Pogacar went, goes on to win that stage and puts massive time into Jonas Finigo, and everyone sitting at home on the Chesterfield knows the Tour de France is about wrapped up right there for Tadej Pogacar, assuming he doesn't have a bad day. From that moment on, I thought Jonas Finigo raced a solid Tour de France, did everything he could, tried a couple times, of course, to for some small attacks, tried to gain some more time, but it wasn't to be. He just didn't have the form to drop Tadej Pogacar, and the next mountain stages were much shorter when we're talking about 150, 140 kilometer stages instead of a monster like we had at stage 15. So throughout the whole Tour de France, I thought Jonas Vingo tactically raced a pretty solid move with everything except for stage 15, 
and maybe a couple of those times when he could have waited up a little sooner for Remco Evans to pull at the top of the climbs, and that way there he has someone to chase Tadej Pogacar. Either way, though, it was pretty spectacular once the Tour de France started. But was his tactics really spectacular? Well, we got to back up the film a little bit more. We got to back it all the way up until after the Vuelta España in 2023, because that was the moment when Primoz Roglic left Visma Lisa bike. That tactically was the huge mistake from Jumbo Visma then and now Visma Lisa bike now was to let the Slovenian Primoz Roglic leave the team. Huge mistake there on the part of the team management tactically. And Jonas Finnego, I got to believe, had some part in that of saying, I want sole leadership at the Tour de France. Now, I've ridden with teams many times throughout my career. And I'll give the example of Team Saturn where we had Nathan O'Neill. We had Tom Danielson on the team at the beginning of the season. Once the season started domestically here in the U.S., I went up to both riders and said, hey, we have to work together. We cannot be attacking each other. We can dominate everything here in the U.S., but we have to share victories. Now, I know it's a Tour de France, but in cycling, it's very easy to see who's on the better form or like we saw at last year's Volta España, if you have a teammate like Sepp Kuss that's on even level form there to start, once we get into stage six of that Volta España, he goes up the road and gains time. That's the way it's played. That move right there put pseudo quick step under the knife there with Remco Evnepoel always having to make up time. It allowed Visma Lisa bike, then Jumbo Visma's, Jonas Vingo and Primus Rogic to sit behind pseudo quick step. They blew up their guys. They went one, two, three on the general classification. So when I look at this season here at the 2024 Tour de France, Jonas Vingo, you were money all of July. I mean, it was spectacular, almost perfect, almost perfect. One stage 15, maybe pulled for three, three, three and a half kilometers too long if I'm being picky, but you were magnificent. But all of you guys on Visma Lisa bike made a huge mistake to let the other Slovenian, Primoz Roglic, go before this year's Tour de France or before his contract was out. I would keep him forever. And having Jonas Vingo and Primoz Roglic on the team is the one tactic that you can employ against Tade Pogacar, and you can employ it at every race you go to, but instead the management let Primoz Roglic go. So they're knuckleheads. That's the end of the story. Jonas Vanigo, fabulous Tour de France. Congratulations. I love the idea that you've dug so deep to come into this year's Tour de France and the whole Visma Lisa bike team under the knife throughout the whole season after all the crashes and, mis and mishaps throughout the season. But you came into the Tour de France, entertained all of us. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next video real soon.